Hello everyone, welcome back to another AR video. In this one, I want to talk to you about the Apple Vision Pro. Apple today unveiled it. It has not launched yet. It's supposed to launch early next year, and I've got some thoughts on it. But before I go into the pros and cons of it, uh, I'll give you a quick overview of what it is. According to Apple, it's a revolutionary spatial computer that seamlessly blends digital content with the physical world, all while allowing users to stay present and connected to others. In non-marketing speak, it's fancy snowboard goggles. <laughs> I'm just kidding, kinda. No, but if you're if you're gonna go snowboarding, you don't need to buy goggles now if you have these. So there's that. Uh, but no, let's go into the let's go into details. I'm gonna start with the cons because not that I'm against the product. I will probably pick it one up eventually when the price comes down. I'm gonna start with some of the cons because they're gonna hit you between the eyes, and then we'll go into the pros, and then I'll sum up the specs. All right, everybody, so I'm going to start off with some of the cons of the product, even though I am bullish on it, and I think it will have a great future. I think the initial version, there are a few things that just are a bit rough, so let's just get into them. The first one, and the most important one, no doubt, is cost. This thing is expensive. The first generation tech often is, and this is no exception. This one is 3,499 USD. Wow, what the heck? That is out of the range for most people. I mean, other than maybe, you know, developers and people that are, you know, use this or could use this daily, this is just crazy. I mean, in terms of like uh, work capacity. For the average, you know, young student or, you know, kid that wants to play video games, it's just way too much money. So there's that. The second con is the size. I mean, it is pretty sleek and it, they do look like snowboarding goggles. So there's that. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, they're not glasses so much as, you know, they're not like, you know, sunglasses, what, you know, you might have expecting. These are a full AR type headset and they look a little too bulky for me. Again, this is first gen product, so they'll probably get reduced in size in future generations. The other one, and this is a big one, is the battery. Yeah, it only has about two hours if it's not plugged in. So you're either going to be tethered or you can walk around the house doing some things and stuff. But I mean, if you look at, you know, the movie they showed in one of their clips, they're showing people watching the Avatar movie, but you know, I mean, you'd have to plug it in halfway through the movie in order to watch the whole thing, unless you know you were tethered. So there's that. Now, oh, and the price. Did I mention the price? Three thousand four hundred ninety-nine USD. What the heck? All right, let's get into the pros. All right, so the pros are, and I mentioned it earlier, but this is Gen One tech. This is first generation stuff. This is the starting point. It will only get better with time. So keep that in the back of your head. If you think about things like the iPod and the iPad, they started out pretty big and bulky and they got thinner and faster and they increased storage. Although we don't know if there's any storage on this one. It hasn't been stated yet. I don't think so. But uh, you know that's going to get better over time. So there is that. Also, there could be some killer apps on this. I didn't really see anything that like blew me away, but one of them was the second monitor option. That looked pretty convincing to me. If I could have a second, you know, massive monitor that's just I'm attached to with my headset, that would be very helpful, especially for, you know, professionals that do things like video editing or design or graphic design and, um, you know, audio and stuff like that. It has a very good use case and you also don't have to buy a second monitor. So there's that. Also, that I mentioned it earlier, if you go snowboarding, you don't have to buy goggles. You've got them and they've got a defogger in there. What the heck is that all about? Um, so there's that. And also, you know, when you get close to people, it you can, they come into view so that you're not going to bump, bumping into people and crashing into things, at least according to the tech demo. So there's that going for it. That said, let's just wrap it up. I'm going to show you some of the specs and we'll call it a day. All right, and here's a quick high-level overview of the specs, but more of what the device can do, especially, you know, in its early days here. So here we go. The first one is it can blend between VR and pass-through by scrolling a crown wheel. So you scroll that cool little wheel at the top there and you can uh, switch modes. It also syncs between iPhone, iPad, and Mac with the iCloud. Another cool thing, no controllers, at least no controllers out of the box here, pretty crazy. You use your voice and hands, that is going to take some getting used to. Also, people can see your eyes when looking at you wearing the goggles, so you're not completely uh, behind uh, the glass and no one can see that you're you're looking at them or they're looking at you. So um, there's a monitor, it's basically a 360 degree monitor, which is pretty cool. It has a built-in 3D camera and it records in 3D and you can watch it back in 3D. So you can basically record in 3D, pretty crazy stuff, and then you watch it on the monitor in 3D, what you just recorded. It's 
going to be interesting, but it looks pretty convincing. You can watch 3D movies. There's going to be 100 arcade games or Apple arcade games on day one, and you can get a game controller, so that'll be interesting. And also, they partnered with Disney+. Plus. Uh, I don't have Disney+, Plus mostly because I have no kids and I'm in my 40s, so that would be weird. But uh, they're partnering, and that's cool. Um, also, 23 million pixels, so it's better than 4K per eye. And what else do we got here? We got spatial audio. They really put an emphasis on the quality of their audio, and it analyzes the room around you to give the best sound. I don't know how it does that, but that's in their marketing. Um, and also, there's two chips. So there's the Apple M2, and then there's the new R1 chip. And finally, they've got a new operating system called Vision OS. So they've got a lot of stuff in here. It's going to be interesting. I look forward to your comments, your thoughts. Are you going to pick one up? I'm probably going to pick a second generation one up. But anyways, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.